Chu Fei Xiong's punch exerted such incredible force that the gauge shifted slightly, the numbers steadily climbing. A classmate quickly pointed out that Chu Fei Xiong had surpassed the class representative's record, setting a new class benchmark. Bewildered by the sudden achievement, Chu Fei Xiong stared at his fists in disbelief. Without delay, Meng Chao accused Chu Fei Xiong of betrayal, condemning him for concealing his practice of the immensely powerful super reckless bull force, which had even surpassed the class rep's achievements. The girls in their class were intrigued by this revelation, expressing their curiosity aloud. Meng Chao, contemplating aloud, explained that the instructors for the reckless bull force were prohibitively expensive to hire, given that each additional 10 kilograms lifted was worth a tenth of a point in the entrance exam, a fact that astonished the girls with its implications of power and prestige. Chu Fei Xiong was taken aback and bewildered when Meng Chao addressed him as big brother and requested to learn the super reckless bull force, a technique Chu Fei Xiong had previously shown him in the restroom. Meng Chao urged him not to hastily reject the request, offering to compensate him with cultivation resources for the tuition and assuring him that he wouldn't suffer any losses. Realizing Meng Chao's profit motive, Chu Fei Xiong felt compelled to assist him, touched by Meng's tearful plea. With tears welling in his eyes, others in the group also begged Chu Fei Xiong to save the children, emphasizing their shared plight. Meng Chao suggested forming a study group, reasoning that since Chu Fei Xiong was already teaching him, extending the lessons to others wouldn't be much different. He proposed that each member contribute cultivation resources as compensation to Chu Fei Xiong, allowing him to further refine his skills. As everyone in the class eagerly expressed their interest, except for Zhuhaoren, who remained seated on the ground, glaring at them, the system notified Meng Chao of an increase in his contribution points by 11. It credited his suggestion for promoting harmony in the class and enhancing the student's motivation to study, potentially leading to improved results and greater contributions to civilization. With a smirk, Meng Chao commended Chu Fei Xiong for his selfless care for his classmates. He cunningly praised Chu Fei Xiong's strength and questioned why the teacher hadn't chosen him as the class representative initially. All eyes turned to Zhuhaoren after Meng Chao's remark, further fueling his anger. Attempting to defuse the tension, Meng Chao extended his hand to help Zhuhaoren up, dismissing his comment as mere banter and urging him not to take it personally. However, Zhuhaoren seated with anger, viewing Meng Chao's actions as despicable and disgusting. Zhuhaoren stood up, refusing Meng Chao's hand, and rebutted his claim, stating that the class representative is the one who truly contributes to the community. Although he smiled outwardly, inwardly, Zhuhaoren plotted to sabotage Meng Chao's chances of getting into college as the college entrance exam approached. As the sun dipped below the horizon and the bell signaling the end of classes rang, Chu Fei Xiong found himself on the rooftop with Meng Chao. He urged him to take everything, recognizing that he had wasted a year and needed the resources more than ever. Discussing the distribution of cultivation resources, Meng Chao proposed a split of three to seven, insisting that there would be no objections. After receiving his share, Chu Fei Xiong asked Meng where he had obtained the technique. In his mind, Meng Chao apologized to Chu Fei Xiong, unable to reveal the truth about the fire incident yet. Instead, he claimed to have found it on the Deep Web's Underground Life Science Forum, assuring Chu Fei Xiong that he had thoroughly evaluated the super reckless bull force, ensuring its safety. Meng Chao expressed his desire to contribute to society but emphasized that there was no need to rush it. He suggested to Chu Fei Xiong that if they were concerned about the risks, they should inform the others that the super reckless bull force was still in its testing stage, highlighting the possibility of encountering bugs. Chu Fei Xiong agreed to relay this message to the others before departing, reminding Meng Chao to head home early as well. Carrying his backpack brimming with cultivation resources, Meng Chao gazed down at the scene below with a sense of melancholy, his thoughts drifting to Dragon City. Reflecting on his past feelings towards the mists, Meng Chao remembered his disdain for its containment of Dragon City, which hindered expansion and brought about a sense of confinement. He also recalled disliking the city itself due to its crowded streets, dense buildings, and the overwhelming pressure to excel in cultivation. He reminisced about how, like many teenagers, he had been influenced by Earth culture, longing for the seemingly idyllic life depicted in books and movies. On Earth, students had minimal physical education but numerous academic lessons, while adults enjoyed shorter work hours, abundant wealth, spacious homes, and access to natural foods. Tears cascaded down Meng Chao's face as he contemplated Earth, a distant hometown they could never return to, and the looming nightmare of an uncertain future.
In that moment, the city became their sole refuge. Suddenly, a fire erupted before him, prompting Meng Chao to realize that even though the spread was indirect, he could be considered a contributor. The system notified him of increasing contribution points as the reckless bull technique disseminated among ordinary citizens, bolstering the city's overall combat prowess. Meng Chao marveled at the satisfaction of contributing to society. His reverie was abruptly interrupted by a public service announcement summoning all citizens' attention. It warned of an impending fog and subsequent monster ambush that night. A colossal ship soared overhead as the announcement detailed predictions of monster concentrations, particularly near the northern steel factories. The Survival Committee had ordered the Steel Dragon Organization to initiate Grade 1 war preparations, with other regions to follow suit at Grade 3. Citizens were urged to adhere to the law, remain vigilant, and prepare to defend against their adversaries. Terror gripped Meng Chao's heart as the public service announcement reassured everyone that they were the Earth's expeditionary force and Dragon City was assured victory. His eyes widened in shock at the news of the impending monster attack that night. As a bus awaited at the school's front gate, Meng Chao, filled with urgency, hurried towards it, urging others to make way. Despite his efforts, the bus began to move, prompting him to shout for it to wait. Ignoring the billowing black smoke, he chased after it, pleading for it to stop and let him on board. Meanwhile, Swahauran sat comfortably in his car, observing Meng Chao from his window, harboring contemptuous thoughts about their classmate. Upon finally boarding the bus, Meng Chao felt a wave of relief wash over him, believing he had made it in time. However, his relief was short-lived as the bus announced their arrival at the Tiger Forest region stop. Despite struggling to disembark due to the crowded bus, Meng Chao eventually managed to step off, feeling relieved once more as he was finally back home. As Meng Chao strolled through the bustling market, he was surrounded by the lively chatter of merchants peddling their wares, from fresh demonic halibut pork to newly developed jade fruit from the genetic farm. Despite the dilapidated surroundings, Meng Chao found solace in the warmth of his memories, smiling as he overheard a mother scolding her child for focusing too much on memorizing Tang and Song Dynasty poems instead of cultivating. Amidst the lively atmosphere, a voice calling out brother caught Meng Chao's attention. It belonged to a girl struggling under the weight of a heavy bucket, pleading for assistance due to her exhaustion. Meng Chao smiled as he recognized her as Xiao Chao, but suddenly, his expression turned to one of horror. Terror filled his eyes as memories of the nightmare flooded back. In his vision, an evil figure resembling Xiao Chao stood before him, bringing with her an aura of eternal darkness. Meng Chao's heart raced as he grappled with the unsettling realization that wherever Xiao Chao went, darkness seemed to follow. In Meng Chao's vivid recollection, Xiao Chao appeared as a dark witch, gleefully stepping on his face and taunting him with laughter. Suddenly jolted back to reality, he found Xiao Chao's concerned face leaning over him, calling him brother. Startled by Xiao Chao's presence, Meng Chao felt a surge of distress, realizing she wasn't the younger sister he had expected. Taking hold of Xiao Chao's shoulder, Meng Chao anxiously questioned whether she would trample him if she gained great power. Xiao Chao, addressing him as her beloved brother, laughed off his concern, wondering why he would think she'd be so brutal. Yet, in her mind, she couldn't help but chuckle at Meng Chao's accurate guess. Indeed, if she became strong, stomping on him would be her first instinct, and she'd do it repeatedly. Recognizing Xiao Chao's transformation into a dark witch in his nightmare, Meng Chao couldn't shake the feeling that there must be a reason behind it. He hesitantly asked if there was something about him that had displeased her. Xiao Chao flashed a bright smile as she reassured Meng Chao that there was no reason for her to be displeased with him. However, inwardly, she seethed with anger, finding her own words nonsensical as she harbored resentment toward him for being a terrible, stupid brother. Overwhelmed with emotion, Xiao Chao broke down, confiding in Meng Chao that he bullied her every day. Meng Chao gently patted her head, attempting to comfort her, but Xiao Chao continued to protest. In response, Meng Chao questioned whether a big brother even needed a reason to tease his younger sister. In his mind, he blamed Xiao Chao for her transformation into the Dark Witch, believing she deserved his retribution while he still had the chance. Determined to prevent Xiao Chao from becoming the feared Dark Witch, Meng Chao resolved to make her the happiest and most beloved little princess in all realms. Despite Xiao Chao's continued protests as they walked through the market, Meng Chao remained unfazed teasing her back and expressing his fondness for her even when she claimed to hate him. Xiao Chao threatened to report him to their father, but Meng Chao brushed it off, teasing her further by suggesting she secretly cared for him. 
Infuriated, Xiao Chao lashed out, claiming nobody cared about him because he was a bad boy. Upon their arrival at their apartment, Xiao Chao wasted no time in reporting to their mother that Meng Chao had been bullying her on the road. Meanwhile, Meng Chao announced his return, greeted by his mother with a smile. She expressed her delight at his timely return, remarking that he had come back just in time. She gently chided Xiao Chao for constantly talking about Meng Chao, then offered them freshly cooked spring rolls to enjoy while they were still warm. Meng Chao's eyes filled with emotion at the sight of his mother, and as she handed him a plate of spring rolls, she encouraged him to taste one. Overwhelmed, tears streamed down Meng Chao's cheeks, prompting his mother to affectionately call him a silly boy for crying over spring rolls. Xiao Chao teased their mother, reminding her of her previous comment about Meng Chao being out of his mind. Suddenly, their father entered the room and overheard Xiao Chao mentioning Meng Chao. He instructed her to turn on the TV to check for live coverage. Xiao Chao quickly complied, switching on the TV to reveal footage of a formidable fighting machine. The news report explained that at 8.55 that night, the Army's war crab commandos would enter the battlefield north of the city, equipped with the latest and most advanced war machines in Dragon City, Steel Crabs. These machines were designed to overwhelm the otherworldly monsters threatening the city. On the TV screen, Professor C.K. Asian of Dragon City University's Department of Biology explained how crustaceans had always been the main attacking force targeting their city. Xiao Chao expressed her boredom with the repeated lessons about crustacean weaknesses, prompting her to change the channel. The new program featured a man wielding two spears leaping from a building, hailed as Dragon City's top martial artist. Xiao Chao was captivated, her eyes sparkling with fascination. Her mother remarked on Xiao Chao's obsession with martial artist Luo Wu, while her father chuckled, teasing her about being a big girl now. Unbeknownst to them, Xiao Chao daydreamed about living in a spacious house, at least 200 square meters in size. Suddenly, the power cut off, plunging the room into darkness as the TV shut down. The building trembled, and Meng Chao urgently warned everyone to be cautious, his expression filled with worry as he announced the monster's arrival. Meanwhile, a public service announcement declared the activation of Fortress Mode in the Blessed Heavenly Garden District, prioritizing energy for defense facilities. People scrambled to flee the streets, some aiding others as they sought safety. After a few tense moments, the Blessed Heavenly Garden District's fortifications were completed. However, the public service announcement continued to blare warnings of an intruder. A massive bee-like monster emerged from the fog, accompanied by a swarm of insect monsters. War machines fired, raining bullets down on the creatures, but their sheer numbers made it difficult for the bullets to find their marks. An order was issued to activate the bunker and prioritize energy for the bunker and high-voltage towers. One high-voltage tower was activated, effectively blowing away many insect monsters. Meanwhile, Meng Chao, observing the scene through binoculars from their home, was taken aback by the sheer number of monsters. Despite having consumed all his nutrients in advance, he still harbored doubts about surviving the impending battle. Meng Chao's father entered the room, inquiring about the situation, to which Meng Chao reassured him that things were currently under control. Suddenly, an old lady accompanied by her dog entered, offering to keep watch outside. Granny Wang assured them not to worry, as she would take care of Xiao Chao and her mother, who were surrounded by three dogs. Concerned for Granny Wang's safety, Meng Chao asked if she was all right. In response, Granny Wang scolded Meng Chao for underestimating her due to her age, pinching his ears. Meng Chao quickly apologized, realizing his mistake. Both Granny Wang and Meng Chao froze as the gunfire ceased, indicating that the insect monsters had destroyed the high-voltage tower, depleting the machine's ammunition above the building. Suddenly, the insect monsters began emitting an ominous light from their backs, sprouting wings made of flames. Meng Chao's father identified them as mutated flame black armor bugs, type, flying flaming bugs. Meng Chao's father swiftly retrieved weapons from their racks, cautioning Meng Chao that they were in for a challenging night ahead. He instructed Meng Chao to conserve bullets and only shoot when the monsters were within range, a command Meng Chao acknowledged. As the flaming black beetles approached the residential area, residents fired their weapons from windows, but their bullets mostly bounced off the beetles' hard shells. Meng Chao's father lamented the difficulty of hitting the creatures and admitted they could only rely on luck. Feeling agitated by the impending danger, Meng Chao contemplated the potential loss of lives that night. Suddenly, fire appeared before him, prompting a system notification asking if he would activate his first fighting quest, 
hunter of foreign insects, aimed at killing flaming black beetles. The system promised a reward of 1,500 contribution points and the opportunity to enhance any basic skills. Meng Chao decided to accept the quest. Confidently, Meng Chao peered through the scope of his gun and activated his basic gun technique skill. With determination, he fired the gun, ignoring Granny Wong's offer to take over. Three consecutive shots rang out, with all hitting one of the flaming black beetles, causing it to plummet from the sky. The system notified Meng Chao of a 1.1 increase in contribution points and a 25% improvement in his basic gun technique skill. Granny Wong playfully slapped Meng Chao's head, remarking that he wasn't too bad, comparing him to her late husband. Meng Chao smiled warmly, acknowledging Granny Wong as his dear grandma. He jokingly added that if Granny Wong hadn't distracted him with her chatter, his consecutive shots could have taken down the beast directly. Meng Chao resumed shooting at the flaming black beetles, noticing his contribution points and gun technique skills steadily increasing. He reflected on how his gun sense from his previous life was gradually returning. His father praised Meng Chao's marksmanship, to which Meng Chao nervously explained about his injury from the previous year and his decision to focus more on shooting practice. Encouraged by his father's support, Meng Chao resolved to continue his efforts that night. As they kept firing at the swarm of flaming black beetles, Meng Chao's father reassured him that there shouldn't be any major problems, urging him to pay attention to his body. However, Meng Chao couldn't shake off his anxiety, knowing there was still a terrifying mystery monster lurking. As Meng Chao scanned through his scope, his eyes widened upon spotting a flaming black beetle emitting a dark aura. The beetle flew through the sky, enveloped in the ominous aura. The mystery monster appeared gigantic and menacing, filling Meng Chao with terror as he realized its identity. Meng Chao recalled the nightmare where the mystery monster devastated the blessed Heavenly Garden District triggering the reappearance of the Dark Witch. Despite firing a bullet at the monster, Meng Chao's attack proved futile as it merely bounced off. Agitated, Meng Chao realized that his current basic gun technique level was insufficient to harm the monster. To stand a chance against it, he needed to reach at least master level, if not perfect level. The mystery monster emitted a piercing shriek, drawing the attention of the troops below. They sensed something amiss with the swarm and warned each other to be cautious of the monstrous figure in the sky. As the flaming black beetles continued their charge, the troop leader instructed everyone to intercept them and prevent them from reaching the residential buildings. Meng Chao joined the firefight against the flaming black beetles, steadily increasing his contribution points and gun technique proficiency as he neared his quest quota. Meng Chao felt a sense of desperation, realizing he must enhance his gun technique before the monster fully awakened. As if responding to Meng Chao's thoughts, the light on the mystery monster's wings intensified and it appeared to sprout a pair of eyes within them. One of the troops quickly identified the mystery monster as a super beast and urgently requested support from superhumans. However, they received no response on the other end of the line, frustrating the troop member. Meanwhile, Meng Chao continued to shoot at the flaming black beetles until his father instructed him to evacuate with his mother due to the possibility of the skybound threat being a super beast. Refusing to leave, Meng Chao insisted that his father take his mother away while he stayed behind. Despite his father's protests, Meng Chao remained firm, claiming he knew what the super beast was and referring to it disdainfully as a bastard. The super beast began gathering a powerful aura in its mouth, unleashing a devastating attack on the troops below, enveloping them in dust and debris. The ensuing explosion created a smoke screen, hindering the troops' ability to aim. Despite their efforts, their bullets failed to penetrate the super beast's shell. The super beast emitted another piercing shriek, this time spreading a golden light towards the flaming black beetles. Empowered by this light, the beetles became more aggressive, launching beams of light and targeting residential buildings. In one of the buildings, a frightened father urged his daughter to flee as a flaming black beetle appeared before them. Suddenly, a member of the self-defense force appeared and swiftly stabbed the flaming black beetle's head. The troops recognized him and were reassured by his presence, knowing that they were prepared to defend against the flaming black beetle's advance. More members of the bayonet team charged forward, declaring Dragon City's inevitable victory. As more flaming black beetles were eliminated from the sky, the system congratulated Meng Chao for completing his first battle quest, rewarding him with 1,500 contribution points. 
it also granted him the ability to increase the level of any of his basic skills immediately. However, Meng Chao decided to first invest all his contribution points into his basic gun technique to explore his proficiency further. Following his instructions, the system upgraded Meng Chao's basic gun technique from a normal level to an expert level, then to a master level. Meng Chao then redeemed the reward for the Hunter of Foreign Insect quest, further elevating his basic gun technique from master level to perfect level. The system provided information about the golden powder emitted by the Super Beast, explaining its ability to enhance the functions of other beetles. Additionally, it detailed the sensory organs within the Super Beast's head armor, noting their extreme sensitivity. As Meng Chao prepared to face the Super Beast with his modified gun, he was startled by Xiao Chao's sudden cry of pain. She fell to the floor, clearly overwhelmed by the recoil of the pistol she had fired. Meng Chao cursed inwardly, realizing that he had forgotten to modify her gun as well. Looking out the window, Meng Chao saw the super beast turning in their direction, its piercing gaze locking onto them. Alarmed by the realization that they had been discovered, Meng Chao felt a surge of urgency. Guns continued to fire from the residential building, but the super beast swiftly maneuvered out of their line of sight, making a beeline for their apartment at incredible speed. With one of the super beast's legs piercing through the hole created by Xiao Chao's shot, Meng Chao instinctively moved to protect her, warning her to be cautious. The super beast withdrew its leg momentarily before preparing to strike again. Suddenly, it lunged forward, its horns crashing into the building and demolishing the wall of Meng Chao's apartment. Meng Chao's expression twisted into one of horror as he realized the super beast had discovered them. Memories flooded back from his past life, recalling how Xiao Chao's assistance in slaying a similar monster had catastrophic consequences, a loud gunshot attracting the super beast, resulting in their mother's severe injury and subsequent hospitalization, followed by a string of misfortunes. Guilt weighed heavily on Meng Chao as he remembered sowing the seeds of darkness during that time. With steely determination in his eyes, Meng Chao swiftly aimed his gun at the super beast believing it to be the very creature that had raised his homeland to ashes and inflicted pain upon his family seven years prior. He squeezed the trigger, adamant that he would not allow the nightmare of his past life to repeat itself. The gunshot echoed as Meng Chao's bullet found its mark, striking one of the super beast's swings. A massive explosion erupted. Meng Chao's father, concerned for his son's safety, questioned his sanity, but Meng Chao remained resolute in his determination to eliminate the super beast. Urging his father to trust him, Meng Chao prepared to face the creature head-on. As the smoke cleared, revealing the enraged super beast with its damaged shell, it began to gather a potent aura in its maw. Meng Chao's eyes gleamed with anticipation, he knew this was his moment. With mastery honed through his basic gun technique at a perfect level, he unleashed a bullet toward the swirling aura in the super beast's mouth. The gathered aura detonated in a blinding burst, engulfing the super beast. With grim determination, Meng Chao commanded it to perish. The creature writhed in agony, flames licking its form as it plummeted to the ground. Blood seeped from its wounds as it lay motionless. Approaching cautiously, they inspected the fallen super beast, victory at last within their grasp. One of the troops proclaimed the super beast's demise, while another remarked on the unexpected prowess of Meng Chao's father, once an ace sharpshooter in the army, still retaining his vigor despite his age. The troop commander rallied everyone to exterminate the remaining flaming black beetles, igniting their determination. With zeal, the troops charged towards the remaining insects. Meanwhile, Meng Chao experienced a nosebleed and struggled to maintain his balance. Despite his physical ordeal, he felt a sense of accomplishment for slaying the super beast. As he collapsed to the ground, consciousness slipping away, Meng Chao's father called out desperately to him. In his fading awareness, Meng Chao believed he had executed a flawless plan. By utilizing a bullet to induce a spiritual energy surge within the super beast's body just before its fatal attack, he harnessed the creature's own power to bring about its demise. Meng Chao harbored the belief that indeed, nightmares could be shattered and futures altered, reaffirming his control over fate. Meanwhile, Xiao Chao's anxious expression betrayed her concern as she hurried towards Meng Chao, clutching a first aid kit. Tearfully, she implored him not to succumb to death, insisting that she had yet to settle her debts with him. Though Meng Chao winced in pain, he managed to inquire about the source of such dire words. Xiao Chao's face lit up with relief upon realizing Meng Chao's survival, while Xiao Chao playfully pinched his cheeks, checking for signs of lucidity. Despite his discomfort, Meng Chao couldn't help but acknowledge Xiao Chao's cunning nature, 
musing that she was indeed a dark witch. Granny Wan, too, expressed concern for Meng Chao's well-being, prompting reassurance from him that he was merely fatigued. Turning to his father, Meng Chao instructed him to claim credit for slaying the beast while keeping his marksmanship prowess a secret. His father's reassurance brought a semblance of comfort to Meng Chao, who nodded wearily, acknowledging the need for rest, especially since the insect swarm had retreated. Granny Wang's words added to the reassurance, promising not to speak out of turn. As weariness settled upon him, Meng Chao gazed vacantly into space, the damage to their apartment a stark reminder of the recent chaos. Yet, observing Granny Wang and Xiao Chao engaged in cheerful conversation brought a sense of closure. His mother, busy dusting dirt off his father, symbolized a return to normalcy, while the troops below worked together, signifying the collective victory. With a serene demeanor, Meng Chao closed his eyes, ready to embrace much-needed rest. However, his moment of peace was shattered as he suddenly realized he hadn't received the anticipated kill confirmation from the fire. Panic gripped him as he pondered the reason behind this anomaly. To his horror, the wings of the defeated super-beast began to stir, signaling an ominous turn of events.